The examples that we've seen so far were really pretty easy to create because they were essentially um, standard plot types that could be generated nearly automatically from the data. Um, PyPlot, as I mentioned, allows you to control many aspects of the plots. Um, so if you want to generate some kind of a plot or visualization that doesn't fall into one of the standard categories, you can do that, but um, it gets a lot more complicated. One of the reasons is that there's not just one way to create plots. And so if you have a particular idea in mind of a visualization that you wanna do, and you start going online to see how to do it, you're gonna find at least one or two or three different ways to create that plot. And that um, is a bit confusing. One of the reasons is I don't, I have not seen evidence that there is the same kind of overarching theoretical framework in um, PyPlot as you have in R. So if you're an R user and you're used to ggplot, ggplot is based on this sort of uh, theoretical um, outlook on graphing called, known as grammar of graphics. And there isn't, as far as I can tell, any overarching theoretical framework like that, which is one of the reasons why there seem to be a lot of different sort of ad hoc um, methods for creating the graphs. So uh, you get a lot of control, but then the challenge, if it's not automated, is somehow you have to get the attributes out of your data and assign them to the right thing, uh, the right um, uh, attributes of the plot. And that is uh, where the challenge is. So in order to be able to do this, it oftentimes requires a lot of data wrangling and, um, and to be able to carry that out successfully, carry that out successfully, you really need to be pretty familiar with Panda's data frames and all of their pieces and about their indices. And also, um, a lot of times you're ending up generating Panda's series, and, and we haven't spent a lot of time talking about those, but um, the uh, sort of theoretical parts of series um, become important. As I said early on, the input uh, that goes into PyPlot is actually NumPy arrays. And uh, because Panda series and Panda data frame columns are at their core NumPy arrays, um, you can pretty much generally pass those into PyPlot and they'll work. But a lot of times, again, as I said, if you go and look at code examples, m many of these code examples will use NumPy arrays as um, the input. And so if you're unfamiliar with NumPy arrays, this can also be confusing and you may want to actually learn more about NumPy just in order to be able to understand the code examples better. So having said this, we will look at a rather complicated example, which is creating a stacked bar chart.